You see, in today's world, we are surrounded by constant noise, notifications, emails, social media, the expectations of others. We've been taught that being busy, being constantly connected is a sign of success. So when we're suddenly left alone without all that noise, we don't know what to do. It's like we're standing in a room full of mirrors and all we can see is ourselves. No filters, no distractions, and that can be unsettling. But what if I told you that this discomfort, this unease, is actually pointing you towards something incredibly valuable? What if the very thing you're avoiding is the key to unlocking a deeper sense of peace and happiness in your life? Think about it for a moment. How often do we seek validation from the outside world, hoping that someone or something will fill the void we feel inside? We turn to relationships, work, social media, anything to avoid the silence of being alone. But that kind of fulfillment is temporary. It's like drinking salty water when you're thirsty. It never truly satisfies. Now, I'm not saying that being around others or seeking connections is bad. Far from it. We are social beings and relationships are a beautiful part of life. But I want to challenge you to consider this, now how much of your happiness depends on those external connections. And what happens when those connections aren't there? When the phone stops ringing, when the party ends, when you're left with nothing but your own thoughts? Can you be at peace? The real challenge and the real opportunity lies in learning to find that peace and solitude because when you can be alone and feel content, when you can sit with yourself without feeling restless or anxious, that's when you begin to discover your true power. You start to realize that you don't need the approval or the attention of others to feel whole. This is what I want to talk about today. Learning to enjoy your own company, not as a last resort or something to endure, but as a source of strength, clarity, and yes, even joy. It's not about isolation or cutting yourself off. It's about understanding that the relationship you have with yourself is the foundation for every other relationship in your life. If you can learn to be your own best company, you'll find that you're never truly alone. And in that space free from distraction, you might just discover the peace and happiness you've been searching for all along. We live in a world that never stops. Think about it. Our lives are filled with distractions. There's always something demanding our attention, whether it's social media, work emails, the latest TV series, or a never-ending list of things to do. It's almost as if we become uncomfortable with the idea of being still, of being quiet, of being alone. And in all this noise, we forget to ask ourselves a simple yet powerful question, when was the last time I truly sat with myself without any distractions? I want you to take a moment and think about that. When was the last time you just sat, not scrolling through your phone, not answering messages or planning your next task, but simply being present with yourself? What did you feel? Did it feel uncomfortable? Did it make you want to reach for your phone or turn on the TV just to escape that silence? For many of us, being alone with our thoughts feels unnatural. We're so used to filling every moment with some kind of distraction that when we finally do have a moment of stillness, it can feel almost threatening. But why? Why is it that being alone with nothing to distract us brings up such discomfort? The truth is we've conditioned ourselves to believe that distractions are a way to avoid unpleasant feelings. When we're constantly busy, we don't have to face our worries, our insecurities, or even our deepest desires. We bury them under layers of distractions, thinking that if we stay occupied, we won't have to deal with them. But the reality is, avoiding solitude only makes things worse. It leads to stress, anxiety, and a feeling that something is always missing. When we don't spend time with ourselves, we lose touch with who we really are. We become so focused on the external world, on what others think of us, on how we measure up, that we forget to listen to our own inner voice. I want you to consider this. What if the discomfort we feel when we're alone isn't actually about being alone at all? What if it's more about the way we've been trained to view solitude? From a young age, many of us are taught that being alone is something to avoid. We're told that it's better to be surrounded by people, to always be connected. And so we grow up associating solitude with loneliness, with boredom, with a lack of purpose. But here's the thing. Solitude and loneliness are not the same thing. 
Loneliness is a feeling of emptiness, of wanting connection but not having it. Solitude, on the other hand, is a state of being alone by choice, a state that could bring peace, clarity, and even creativity. The problem isn't being alone. The problem is how we perceive it. Now let's compare that to solitude. Solitude is different. Solitude is a state of being alone, yes, but it's not about disconnection or emptiness. It's about being with yourself fully present and finding peace in that. Solitude is about stillness, not lack. It's about quiet, not isolation. When you're in solitude, you aren't longing for someone to fill a void. You're content in your own company. They've been conditioned to fear solitude. We equate it with being lonely or feeling unwanted. Think about how often we hear things like, don't be alone on a Friday night, or you should always have people around you. Society sends us this message that being alone means something is wrong. But I'm here to tell you that solitude is one of the most powerful tools for personal growth you can ever have. Let's take a moment and really think about this. Why do we associate being alone with something negative? Maybe it's because we've been taught to seek validation from the outside world through relationships, through praise, through... And when we're alone, we don't have those external sources to make us feel good. So we assume that something's wrong. But solitude isn't about the absence of connection. It's about the presence of self. It's about tuning in to your own thoughts, your own desires, your own emotions without relying on someone else to guide you. In solitude... You give yourself the space to understand who you are without the noise of the world drowning out your inner voice. When was the last time you sat with yourself and truly listened? Not just to the surface level thoughts that pass through your mind, but to the deeper questions that live inside you. What do I really want? What makes me happy? What do I need to heal? These are the kinds of questions that only arise when you give yourself the gift of solitude. And here's something powerful to remember. When you learn to enjoy your own company, you stop needing others to complete you. That's emotional independence. You begin to realize that your worth doesn't depend on someone else's opinion, and your happiness isn't tied to external circumstances. You can be alone and still feel whole, fulfilled, and at peace. I love this quote from the American author, Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, nothing can bring you peace but yourself. Think about that for a moment. No amount of success, no relationship, no external achievement can bring you lasting peace. Only you can do that. And it starts by being comfortable in your own skin, in your own space, with your own thoughts. I know this can be a challenging idea, especially in a world that constantly tells us to seek fulfillment outside of ourselves. But I encourage you to flip that narrative. Solitude isn't something to be avoided. Because in solitude, you begin to see yourself clearly. You start to realize your own strength, your own resilience, and your own capacity for joy. But here's the good news. You don't need anyone else to tell you that you're worthy. You don't need anyone else's approval to feel good about who you are. When you learn to enjoy your own company, when you build a strong relationship with yourself, you begin to realize that the only validation that truly matters is your... Think about it. How freeing would it be to stop worrying about what others think of you? How liberating would it feel to make decisions based on what you want rather than what you think will impress someone else? When you're able to stand on your own, confident in who you are, you stop needing the world's approval. You start living life on your own terms, guided by your own inner voice. Now, I'm not saying that we should shut ourselves off from others or stop caring about our relationships. Far from it. But when you learn to validate yourself, you bring a different kind of energy into your relationships. You're no longer looking to others to complete you. You're already complete. You show up as your authentic self without needing anyone else's approval to feel whole. This is one of the most powerful things you can do for yourself. Break free from the need for external validation. And when you do, something incredible happens. You start to feel a sense of freedom you may have never experienced before. You start to realize that your worth isn't tied to someone else's opinion. It's something you carry within you, always. So how do you begin this process of freeing yourself from external validation? It starts with recognizing where you're seeking approval in your life. Pay attention to the moments when you find yourself doing something 
just to get a reaction from someone. Am I doing this because it's true to who I am or am I doing it because I want someone else to approve of me? Once you start becoming aware of these patterns, you can begin to shift your focus inward. And remember, this isn't about being perfect. We're all human and we all crave connection and approval to some degree. But when you learn to enjoy your own company, when you find that inner peace, the need for external validation begins to fade. You become more comfortable with who you are and you stop needing the world to tell you that you're enough because you already know it. Let me leave you with this thought. The greatest approval you can ever receive is your own. When you validate yourself, when you enjoy your own company, you unlock a freedom and a power that no one else can give you. And from that place of inner strength, you can live a life that's true to who you are without needing anyone else's approval to feel complete. Let me ask you something, and I want you to really think about this. What are the things that bring you joy? What lights you up inside? Have you lost touch with those passions? You see, in the hustle and noise of daily life, it's easy to push aside the things that truly make us happy. We get caught up in obligations, responsibilities, and the expectations of others, and somewhere along the way, we forget about the things that make us feel alive. Maybe there was a time when you had hobbies or interests that filled you with excitement, things you did purely because they brought you joy. But over time, life got busy and you told yourself that those things weren't as important. You told yourself you'd get back to them someday. And here we are, years have passed, and that someday still hasn't come. What have you gave yourself permission right now to rediscover those things that bring you joy? What if, in the time you spend alone, you use that space to reconnect with your passions and interests, the things that are uniquely yours? One of the most beautiful gifts that alone time offers is the opportunity to explore what truly makes your heart sing. When you're alone, without distractions, without anyone else's opinions influencing you, you can start to remember what it feels like to do something just because it makes you happy. Not because it's productive, not because it's expected of you, but simply because it brings you joy. Think back to when you were a child. Children don't worry about whether their hobbies are practical or useful. They don't care if their interests seem silly to others. They do things because they're fun, because they're exciting, because they make them feel good. Somewhere along the way, as adults, we lose that sense of play, that freedom to enjoy something for the simple pleasure of it. But here's the truth. Your passions are still there waiting for you. They haven't gone anywhere. They've just been buried under the layers of your busy life. And now as you spend time alone, you have the perfect opportunity to start peeling back those layers and rediscovering the things that make you feel most like yourself. You might be thinking, I don't even know what my passions are anymore. I've been so focused on other things for so long, I wouldn't even know where to start. And that's okay. That's completely normal. But here's the exciting part. Now you get to experiment. Now you get to try new things, explore different interests, and see what lights you up. Maybe you've always wanted to try painting or writing or learning a musical instrument. Maybe you used to love dancing or hiking or cooking new recipes. Or maybe there's something entirely new that you've never tried before but have always been curious about. Whatever it is, give yourself permission to explore it without any expectations. Remember, this isn't about being good at something. It's not about achieving anything. It's simply about finding joy in the act of doing it. When you spend time alone, you don't have anyone else's opinions or judgments clouding your mind. You're free to try things without worrying about what anyone else thinks. And in that freedom, you can rediscover parts of yourself that you may have forgotten or ignored for too long. Let me share a story with you. There was a man I once knew, a successful businessman, who had spent years building his career. He was always busy, always on the go, and he was good at what he did. But one day he realized that despite all the success, something was missing. He couldn't remember the last time he did something just for fun. He couldn't remember the last time he felt real joy. So he decided to take some time for himself. He started spending quiet mornings alone, just reflecting on his life. And one day, he remembered how much he used to love photography. When he was younger, he would spend hours taking pictures, capturing the beauty he saw in the world. But over time, 
he had put his camera away, telling himself that he was too busy, that there were more important things to focus on. But in those quiet moments, alone with his thoughts, he realized that photography had brought him a sense of peace and happiness that he hadn't felt in years. So he picked up his camera again just to see how it felt, and something incredible happened. He rediscovered his passion. It wasn't about becoming a professional photographer. It wasn't about impressing anyone. It was about finding joy in something that was just for him. And that's the point. When you spend time alone, you give yourself the chance to reconnect with the things that are just for you. Your passions, your interests, your joys, they don't have to make sense to anyone else. They don't have to be productive or lead to something bigger. They just have to make you happy. And that in itself, now some of you might be thinking, but I don't have time for that. I have responsibilities. I have obligations. I can't just focus on myself. And I understand that. We all have busy lives and it can feel selfish to take time for yourself. But let me tell you something important. Taking time to reconnect with your passions isn't selfish. It's necessary. When you're doing something that brings you joy, you're filling your own cup. And when your cup is full, you have so much more to give to the people around you. You're more present, more engaged, and more alive. So if you're worried about taking time for yourself, remember this. By nurturing your own joy, you're actually bringing more light and energy into every part of your life. So I encourage you to start experimenting. Give yourself the space to try new things, to rediscover old hobbies, to explore the interests that make you feel alive. And don't worry about whether you're good at them or not. This is about finding joy, not perfection. Once you reconnect with your passions, a powerful transformation takes place. You start to feel more in tune with who you are. You start to experience a sense of fulfillment that comes from within rather than from external sources. And that sense of fulfillment spills over into every other area of your life. You become more confident in your decisions, more grounded in your sense of self, and more at peace with the world around you. Because when you're in touch with your own joy, you stop looking for it in places where it doesn't exist. You stop waiting for someone else to make you happy, and you realize that the happiness you've been searching for has been inside you all along. When was the last time you felt truly at peace without any external pressures weighing down on you? Picture that moment, maybe it was a quiet afternoon, perhaps sitting by a window, watching the world go by, or even lying on the grass, staring at the clouds. In that moment of solitude, everything felt right, didn't it? There was a stillness, a clarity, a sense of being at one with yourself and the universe. But in our busy lives, how often do we allow ourselves to experience that kind of peace? How often do we carve out moments of true solitude? You see, many of us are constantly bombarded by the noise of daily life. Social media notifications, phone calls, meetings, and the endless stream of information that demands our attention. In all this chaos, we forget to give ourselves the space to just... Solitude is not just a void to be filled. It's an opportunity for profound growth. Research shows that spending time alone can significantly enhance creativity, problem-solving abilities, and emotional clarity. Yes, yeah, scientists have proven that when we step away from distractions that allow our minds to wander, we unlock pathways to innovative ideas and solutions that we might have never considered in a crowded room. Think of the great thinkers, artists, and visionaries throughout history. Many of them actively sought solitude. Albert Einstein would often retreat to a quiet space to think through complex problems. He knew that the answers he sought could not be found amidst the chaos of others' voices. Artists like Vincent van Gogh and George O'Keefe created their most celebrated works during periods of solitude, drawing inspiration from their inner landscapes. Even modern innovators like Steve Jobs recognized the power of solitude. Jobs famously took long walks by himself, using that time to reflect and create he understood that being alone didn't mean being lonely. It meant accessing a deeper part of oneself that often gets drowned out in the noise of the world. When we allow ourselves this time, we can tap into creativity in ways we never thought possible. 
Imagine sitting quietly with a notebook, letting your thoughts flow without judgment. Suddenly, ideas begin to emerge. You might find solutions to problems that have been nagging at you. You might remember old dreams that have been buried under the weight of life's responsibilities. And then there's the emotional clarity that solitude brings. When we are alone, we can connect with our feelings, sift through our thoughts, and gain a better understanding of ourselves. It's in these moments that we can ask ourselves the tough questions, what do I truly want? What am I feeling? What do I need to let go of? When we are surrounded by others, it's easy to overlook our own needs and desires. Uh, solitude gives us permission to explore these thoughts without distractions. I want to share a personal story. There was a time in my life when I felt lost and missed my responsibilities. I was busy, constantly surrounded by people and noise, but I felt a profound emptiness. So I decided to spend a few days alone at a small cabin in the woods. At first, I felt the urge to fill the silence with noise, music, podcasts, anything to drown out the thoughts. But gradually, as the days passed, I learned to embrace the quiet. It was there, surrounded by nature, that I started to feel a sense of peace was over me. I picked up my journal and began to write. Ideas flowed freely, and for the first time in a long while, I felt clarity about my purpose and my passions. I left that cabin renewed, inspired and grateful for the experience of solitude. Now, I'm not saying solitude is always easy. Initially, it can feel uncomfortable. You might wrestle with thoughts and feelings you've been avoiding, but that's where the real magic happens. It's in facing those uncomfortable feelings, in listening to that inner voice, that we find strength and resilience. So how can you begin to cultivate this peace and clarity in your own life? Start small. Set aside a few minutes each day for solitude. It could be as simple as sitting quietly in your favorite chair, going for a walk in nature or even meditating. Allow your thoughts to flow freely. Don't judge or analyze them, but just observe. Over time, you'll find that this practice becomes more comfortable, more natural. And remember, solitude isn't just about creativity or peace. There's a deeper change that happens when we truly learn to enjoy our own company. When you embrace solitude, you start to become your own best friend. You learn to trust yourself, to appreciate your own thoughts and feelings, and to celebrate your own achievements, no matter how small. As you begin to cultivate this relationship with yourself, you'll notice that your interactions with others begin to change as well you'll find that you're less dependent on external validation and more grounded in your own sense of worth. You'll become more confident, more authentic, and more open to genuine connections with... So I invite you to embrace solitude as a powerful tool for personal growth. Allow yourself the gift of time alone. Create space for creativity, clarity, and peace to flourish in your life. And as you do, watch as you transform into a more empowered, and joyful version of yourself. Let's take a moment to reflect on something important. What parts of yourself do you hide when you're around others? What fears do you carry with you into those crowded rooms or social gatherings? Think about it. Each of us has those little pieces of ourselves that we sometimes feel the need to conceal. Our insecurities, our quirks, our true thoughts and feelings. Why do we do this? Is it because we fear judgment or perhaps we fear rejection. In our interactions, we often put on masks, showing only the version of ourselves that we believe is acceptable to others. We might feel pressure to conform to social expectations or to fit into certain molds. But when the noise fades and we find ourselves in solitude, we come face to face with the raw, unfiltered parts of who we are. This can be both liberating and intimidating. The beauty of spending time alone is that it creates a safe space to confront those fears and insecurities head-on. In solitude, you don't have anyone else's opinion shaping your thoughts. There's no one to judge or evaluate your feelings. This is an opportunity to explore the parts of yourself that you've tucked away. The aspects that yearn for acknowledgement and acceptance. Let me share a story with you. A dear friend of mine struggled with anxiety. He often felt overwhelmed in social situations and found himself playing small to avoid the discomfort. He would suppress his true thoughts and feelings, hiding behind a facade of what he thought people wanted to see. 
But when he finally took time for himself, some quiet evenings at home with just his thoughts, he began to confront his fears. In those quiet moments, he started journaling about his feelings. He wrote about his anxieties, his dreams, and even the moments when he felt ashamed or inadequate. Slowly, he began to understand that these fears were not as powerful as they seem. He learned that those parts of himself he had hidden were valid and worthy of love and acceptance. Facing his fears in the safety of solitude allowed him to peel back the layers of self-doubt. He realized that many of the judgments he feared from others were simply reflections of his own insecurities. With each page he filled, he found strength and clarity. Eventually, he felt empowered to share more of his true self with others, and that opened the door to deeper, more meaningful connections. You see, when we face our insecurities in solitude, we give ourselves the chance to understand and embrace them. We can acknowledge our fears without the pressure of judgment, allowing us to work through them at our own pace. This process is not always easy. It requires vulnerability, honesty, and a willingness to sit with discomfort. But I promise you, it's worth it. So how do you begin to face these insecurities? Start by creating a space for yourself. Whether it's a cozy corner in your home, a favorite park bench, or anywhere you feel comfortable. Set aside some time each day to sit quietly and reflect. You might start by asking yourself, what am I afraid of? What am I hiding? Allow those questions to linger in your mind. Write down whatever comes to you, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem. As you reflect, you might uncover fears that have been lurking in the shadows for too long. Maybe you fear failure or feel unworthy of love and acceptance. Maybe you worry that others will see you as inadequate. These feelings are more common than you think. They're part of being human. And the more you acknowledge them, the less power they will hold over you. As you begin to face your insecurities, you'll find something remarkable waiting for you on the other side. You'll discover a deeper sense of self-acceptance and self-love. You'll learn that it's okay to be imperfect, that it's okay to show up as your authentic self flaws and all. And once you embrace this truth, a beautiful shift occurs. You start to experience freedom, not just in solitude, but in your relationships with others as well. Imagine walking into a room filled with people, feeling confident enough to share your thoughts and feelings openly. You no longer feel the need to hide. Instead, you shine brightly, attracting those who appreciate you for who you truly are. You build connections based on authenticity. And those relationships become richer and more. And here's the key. The more you embrace your true self without fear, the more you empower others to do the same. When you're honest about your struggles, you give permission for others to be vulnerable too. This creates a ripple effect, fostering a culture of acceptance and understanding. So I encourage you to take that leap. Spend time in solitude, not just to escape the world, but to truly discover yourself. Allow yourself to confront your fears and insecurities. Embrace your true self without fear of judgment. When you do, you unlock a profound sense of freedom that enriches not only your life, but the lives of those around you. Remember, the journey to self-acceptance is ongoing. It's a process that requires patience and compassion. So be gentle with yourself as you navigate this path. You're not alone in this struggle. And each step you take brings you closer to the beautiful, authentic person you were always meant to be. How often do you take a moment to express love or kindness toward yourself? Think about that for a second. Many of us are quick to extend compassion and understanding to others, but when it comes to ourselves, we can be our own harshest critics. And we might wake up in the morning and focus on our flaws, reminding ourselves of the mistakes we made yesterday. Instead of celebrating our strengths and accomplishments, we often dwell on what we perceive to be shortcomings. But what if we shifted our focus? What if we learned to enjoy our own company, not just as a practice, but as a pathway to self-love? When we spend time alone, we have the unique opportunity to connect with ourselves on a deeper level. This time of solitude can serve as a nurturing space, allowing us to cultivate a loving relationship with ourselves. Let me share a personal story that illustrates this point. There was a period in my life when I was caught up in the hustle and bustle constantly chasing goals and 
achievements. I found myself feeling overwhelmed and dissatisfied despite the external successes I had attained. It was during this time that I realized I had neglected an essential aspect of my well-being, self-love. So I decided to dedicate time to being alone, not as a form of escape, but as a conscious choice to nurture myself. In those moments of solitude, I began to practice positive self-talk. Instead of focusing on what I thought I was lacking, I started acknowledging my strengths, my values, and the unique qualities that make me who I am. I would look in the mirror and say, you are enough. This simple affirmation changed my outlook. It reminded me that I didn't need to seek validation from others. I was worthy of love and acceptance just as I was. It's easy to forget that self-compassion is a practice. So often, we think that self-love should come naturally, but it takes intention and effort. One way to cultivate this compassion is through mindfulness. Mindfulness allows us to observe our thoughts and feelings without judgment. It's about being present in the moment, acknowledging our experiences as they are, and treating ourselves with kindness. The next time you catch yourself being critical or unkind to yourself, pause. Take a deep breath and ask yourself, would I say this to a friend? More often than not, the answer is no. We tend to be far gentler and more forgiving toward others than we are to ourselves. This awareness is the first step toward transforming how we speak to ourselves. Consider incorporating a daily practice of gratitude into your routine. Each day, take a moment to reflect on three things you appreciate about yourself. Maybe it's your ability to listen to others, your sense of humor, or your dedication to learning. By focusing on the positive aspects of who you are, you slowly start to shift your mindset. You begin to see that love and kindness are not just reserved for others, they're essential for your well-being too. Additionally, engage in activities that bring you joy and fulfillment, whether it's painting, gardening, cooking, or simply going for a walk in nature. These moments of pleasure can serve as expressions of self-love. They remind you that you deserve to enjoy life and all the beauty it has to offer. When you allow yourself to indulge in activities that light you up, you reinforce the idea that your happiness matters. And let's not forget the power of journaling. Writing down your thoughts and feelings can be incredibly therapeutic. It's a space where you can be completely honest with yourself, expressing emotions that may be difficult to articulate verbally. As you pour your heart onto the pages, you create a record of your journey towards self-discovery and acceptance. As you cultivate self-love, you'll notice a profound transformation in how you experience the world around you. With self-love comes a new lens through which to view your life. You'll start to approach challenges with a sense of resilience, knowing that you have the inner strength to overcome obstacles. Instead of shying away from difficulties, you'll embrace them seeing them as opportunities for growth. Moreover, self-love allows you to build healthier relationships. When you treat yourself with kindness and respect, you set the tone for how others treat you. You'll attract people who value you for who you truly are. And those relationships will flourish because they're built on a foundation